Hello and welcome to Morningstar. I'm Emma Wall and I'm joined today by Morningstar Senior Fund Analyst Simon Doricott to discuss the merger between Janus and Henderson. Hello, Simon. Hi. So who are Janus, I suppose, is the first question. Yeah, well, they're an established US group, uh, less well known uh, in the UK, of course, uh, based in Denver, Colorado. And uh, historically, they've been very much focused on US equities um, with a with a a pretty strong growth style as well, but uh, they've been diversifying out of, away from that over the last decade or so, I would say. A lot of the rhetoric coming out today about this is it is not an acquisition, it is a merger. What other terms do we know? Well, it, it does seem to be uh, very much a merger. We've, we've seen uh, the announcement that uh, going forward, should it all go ahead, there'll be uh, two CEOs, so CEOs of both um, companies will remain in place and, and operate in partnership. Um, it, it's it's uh, it's something where it's pretty clear that there there are business benefits. I think um, both companies are looking to diversify away from their their base. As I say, Janus historically has been focused on U.S. equities, and Henderson has has quite a a focus on on Europe, uh, including the UK as well. Um, and I think both companies in the past have stated an intention to try to diversify away from that, as I say. Uh, and this this very much uh, this this potential merger very much uh, achieves that gate that that aim. Um, and for readers or for watchers of this video, they are more likely to be Henderson Fund investors rather than Janus Fund sure. investors. If I own a UK domiciled Henderson Fund, how does this affect me, if at all? Well, certainly in the short term, it is going to be very much business as, as usual. <clears throat> and uh, Henderson, uh, their, their investment culture is, is very much to leave individual fund managers to, to operate their own processes. They monitor them quite closely to ensure they continue to do that. But uh, that's their, their stated aim, and that comes from the top in terms of uh, Graham Kitchen, their head of equities, and Andrew Formica as well. Uh, so it, it would be unusual to see that change and to see a, a significant change in, in the way the individual funds are, are actually managed. That being said, uh, you know, this, this sort of uh, activity obviously creates some potential for uncertainty within those uh, those individual teams, uh, and there is some potential for for cultures to to change slightly. And I and I think you know the culture at Henderson, as described already, is something that has resulted in a in a pretty high retention rate for for their managers historically. So we need to ensure, um, you know, in terms of Morningstar ratings, that we're happy that that culture can uh, can be maintained under the new structure. Um, there is going to be a new CIO for the new group. Um, having spoken to our, our analyst colleagues in, in, the, in the US, they seem pretty happy with, uh, with the, the, the CIO and what he's been doing for, for the Janus group. So we, we have some uh, positive views there as well. That being said, as I say, you know, we do need to monitor that and ensure that the culture remains in place and that the fund managers are happy to uh, to stay put, essentially. Um, I don't think they've announced any any sort of lock-ins for individual managers, but part of the uh, part of the uh, reason for for merging the groups is to increase um, distribution and obviously, that gives the potential for, for fund managers to increase their AUM and as a consequence of that to, to increase their, their bonuses. And hopefully that all, that all works through and, uh, and you know, we're, we're left with uh, fund management teams that are happy with the new structure. But uh, essentially only time will tell. Simon, thank you very much. Thank you. This is Emma Wall from Morningstar. Thank you for watching.